In an earlier session, we began our discussion on the topics of vectors and vector calculus. In particular, we defined the so-called linear vector space whose elements are known as the vectors. In today's session, we are going to discuss the methods of calculus involving vectors. In analogy with the derivative of a function, we can define the derivative of a vector. The derivative of a vector u is defined as du dx equal to limit h goes to 0 u at x plus h minus u at x over h. So as you see it here, the derivative of a vector is defined in a similar manner. In an earlier session, we have seen that derivative product of two function satisfy the so-called Leibniz rule. Similarly, we can write down the Leibniz rules involving the derivatives of vectors. The derivative involving the product of a scalar function and a vector function can be expressed as, as you see it here, d dx of a times u vector is equal to da dx times u plus a times du dx. Similarly, the derivative of dot product of two vectors u and v can be expressed as du dx dot v plus u dot dv dx. In analogy, even for cross product of two vectors, we can apply Leibniz rule as you see it here. In particular, d dx of u cross v is equal to du dx cross v plus u cross dv dx. I should emphasize one important point here. While carrying out the Leibniz rules, one must remember to maintain the order, especially for cross product. Now we are going to introduce a vector operator involving partial derivatives, which is known as gradient operator. Sometimes it is also called the Nabla operator. Gradient operator is defined as i cap times del del x plus j cap times del del y plus k cap times del del z. Now let us define the gradient of a scalar function say phi. Gradient of a scalar function phi can be expressed as grad phi equal to i cap del phi del x plus j cap times del phi del y plus k caps times del phi del z as you see it here. Let us now consider an example where we compute the gradient of a potential function which is a scalar function as given here. We know gradient of the scalar potential phi can be expressed as i cap times del phi del x plus j cap times del phi del y plus k cap times del phi del z. As you can see it here, we can explicitly evaluate the gradient of the scalar potential phi to be i cap times 2xy plus z plus j cap times x square plus k cap times x. Then at the point 1 comma 2 comma minus 1, the gradient can be evaluated in a straightforward manner as you see it here to be 3 times i cap plus j cap plus k cap. Using gradient operator, we can also define the so-called divergence of a vector. Divergence of a vector v is defined as grad dot v vector. That is i cap del del x plus j cap del del y plus k cap del del z dot product with vx times i cap plus by times j cap plus vz times k cap. Using the definition of dot product, divergence of a vector field V can be expressed as del del x of Vx plus del del y of Vy plus del del z of Vz. Using index notation, we can express the divergence of a vector V as summation over ij delta ij times nabla i times Vj, which is same as summation over i del i Vi.
where del 1 means del del x, del 2 means del del y and del 3 means del del z. Let us now introduce the so called curl of a vector. Curl of a vector v is defined as cross product between the gradient operator and a vector v. In the index notation, we can express the ith component of curl of a vector v as summation over jk, Lebesgue beta symbol ijk del j vk. In particular, now we can check the x component that is i equal to 1 when we substitute the value of epsilon ijk then we can see that it reduces to the standard form in other words the x component of curl of a vector then becomes del del y of vz minus del del x of vy using the gradient operator we can also define the so-called laplacian of a scalar function phi so the laplacian of a scalar field phi can be expressed as del 2 phi del x2 plus del 2 phi del y2 plus del 2 phi del z2. Let us consider an example here. So that curl of a gradient of a scalar function vanishes. That is curl of gradient of phi equal to 0. We know the ith component of a curl of a vector can be expressed as as you see it here, summation over jk, epsilon ijk times del j and the kth component of the gradient of phi. Now we know that Lebesgue beta symbol is antisymmetric in the indices j and k, whereas del j and del k are symmetric in the index jk. We have seen earlier that partial derivatives commute. So as you see it here, it is quite straightforward to show that an arbitrary component of curl of a gradient of a scalar function vanishes. Therefore, curl of a gradient of a scalar function is a null vector. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. In case you have a question, comments or a suggestion, please feel free to write them below in the comment section. And if you would like to follow the physics discussion here, then you are welcome to subscribe to this channel.